Hey everyone, Corus here. Welcome to this video in which I will show you my top 7 favorite paints. So I've taken a look at my paint collection and I decided on these 7 paints that I want to talk about a bit more. Some of them I use quite often, some others are in here because they're a special use. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. Before I start discussing every paint individually, there are two things I want to tell you. First of all, there are links to the exact paints uh, in the video description, so you can find a link there uh, to the exact uh, paint. And the names are also in the full names are also in descriptions, names and brands. Uh, second, uh, a question I get quite a lot. These are Citadel paints, as you can see, they're in a dropper bottle. Uh, I transferred those. There's a question that I get quite often: uh, Where do you buy the bottles? Uh, how do you get the paints in there? Now I have a separate video on the subject. It will be uh, in on the screen currently somewhere here, or else there will also be a be a link in the video description to the process of uh, transferring the Citadel paints from their regular uh, pots like these into the dropper bottles. So you can also notice that there are two different kinds of dropper bottles. Um, these are the ones I did first, but then these weren't available anymore. I bought them on eBay years ago, and then more recently I bought these, I think, on AliExpress. Um, so that's the reason why they are look different, but basically the process is the same for the, for to transfer these paints. So let's start off with the two Citadel paints first. Uh, this Mood Green is in here because yeah, I think it's a really, really nice color. And it's something uh, I people who know me a bit better know that I uh, use quite a lot of Vallejo model color. And the property of Vallejo model color is that they're all quite muted tones, very a lot of uh, earth tones in there. And some of the paints, uh, really, really bright paints, you can simply find them in Vallejo model color. Um, other examples are here like the Citadel. Uh, Flash gets yellow, for example. It's a very, very bright paint. Also, some of the the oranges, uh, the reds are also very, very good in a Citadel. Uh, so that type of colors, I uh, turn myself to Citadel, and I think the mood green is another great example of such a paint. I bought it to paint the Fungoid Cave Shaman. I did Shaman. I did I think two years ago. So I think for goblin skin, this really, really works great. But I also use this quite a lot. Um, to really get that neon green that you sometimes want on a model. I uh, started using this uh, neon green application um, on some Infinity Commissions. I'm also currently working on one right now, so I can show you. This is a model, so the mood green is used on the base here, on the front side of the base, and also on a bunch of detailing, such as the visor. Um, another model which, is currently, which I'm currently working on is also using the mood green here. Another infinity models you can see here on the vest, use some details here and there. So really, really the the, the really bright neon green. Um, if you want to paint this on, then I can really advise to use the mood green for that. If, and also if you use if you want to get a very bright uh, goblin skin. Okay, second paint. Um, a bit of a similar story here as with the previous one. So the Vallejo model color. Great paints overall, but I think they're metallics. They're uh, they're really lacking. I don't don't like them at all. So I used um, a switch to uh, Citadel paints for the metallics years ago, and then when a new line of metallics came out, um, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. They look a lot more more grainy uh, than the previous uh, series, but nonetheless they have some very nice colors, uh, and I think this Retributor armor is a great example. It's a fantastic fantastic gold it covers really well really really bright color very shiny uh, i think overall it's a great color uh, at the time i bought it i thought it was was one one or two euros more expensive it was released when the first generation of uh, stormcast eternals came out so i don't don't quite get it why it why it was more expensive i don't know if it still uh, still is today i have to look it up uh, but anyway, I think it's it's yeah, it's expensive, but I think it's worth uh, worth the money. Really great overall metallic. So finally, we arrive at the Vallejo model color paints. Uh, this is the first one. Um, for years and years, I used a color called uh, cadmium maroon or something like that. It disappeared from the Vallejo model color series and it was replaced by this color. I think the cadmium maroon, if you can get it, um, it's still 
bit better than this, it's much warmer and a bit darker red than this one, but this is, I think it has the same number, it's a replacement, has a different name, has a bit of a different uh, color in this, but this is a really, really nice dark brownish uh, red that I use for uh, all kinds of applications, especially for skin tones, so what I do for my basic skin recipe, um, if I remember correctly, there's also a tutorial um, that I can link, I will link it up there about here somewhere or else in the video description um, which I show you how you how I paint uh, basic skin tone and it involves if I remember correctly it involves uh, burnt cadmium red and a basic skin tone like the medium flesh so for the shading I always use this it really really gives the skin uh, a warm uh, warm color and overall on its own this is also a very very nice color to uh, to use on a model for years I've been looking for a really really neutral gray and what I mean by neutral gray is that you can both use this as a base coat for a darker gray and also for a base coat as a base coat for a for a lighter gray and I think the basal gray by uh, Vallejo this uh, from the model color series as well yeah it does this trick really well um, it serves as a great base coat for any any gray you want use it with a light gray to highlight it with a light gray um, in the mix to create a very very nice lighter gray color or otherwise one of my other favorite grays is this um, black gray yeah, the, the bottle is a bit dirty but this black gray mix those two together to create a, a bit of a darker uh, base coat but on its own the basal gray I think if you're looking for a neutral gray um, to use anywhere then I think the basal gray is great great uh, paint for you told you that I use the burnt cadmium red a lot in skin tone so if you want to create a, um, a warm skin tone then I use the burnt cadmium red to do the shading uh, and this Prussian blue is a paint that among other things I use uh, on skin tones for the col colder skin tones um, I use this also uh, together if I remember correctly um, with the Rackard flesh or the flayed one flesh one of those two as a base coat uh, for the skin tone of my night hounds and I also used this then mixed in the Prussian blue to create a shading and it really creates this very very cold skin tone but I think this uh, I mean the same thing goes if you mix it into the medium flesh tone shade the medium flesh tone with the Prussian blue then you also get very very dark and cold uh, skin tone um, other than that I think this is a great neutral blue great paint also by Vallejo very good cover as well um, overall a very very good uh, choice if you're looking for a neutral blue okay so I've not included any obvious colors like black and white um, which are the two colors I probably use most uh, when mixing mixing paint shading and highlighting um, black and white I think this color comes in third as the most used color uh, deck tan uh, I use it as a base for a couple of models, uh, most recently I painted all my Stormcast Eternals uh, in this shade, so in this uh, base coat, base coated them with this, and then I used, that's something I forgot to tell, I used Burnt Cadmium Red, uh, the, the, one of the previous paints, uh, to shade it, um, and it really, really, you can't really tell in the finished model that this painted with deck tan, just simply because of the Burnt Cadmium Red, which is in the in the mix, but so yeah what I wanted to say is that this is really really good a base coat if you want to paint something not really the beige but a bit of an off-white a cold off-white this is really good paint uh, to use really great coverage only you need one layer of this uh, to go for a good base coat and otherwise I use this quite a lot as a replacement for white when I'm highlighting things so if you're only using white and you yeah, you get this sometimes get this monochrome color, a bit of a cold uh, highlight. Um, if you want to avoid it, then you can try using a deck tan, which is not quite as bright as the white, but it still can be used to uh, to create a lighter uh, mix of um, of the paint you're currently using. It goes together with a lot of colors. Uh, for example, on my night hounds, most recently the the shading, uh, the highlighting you can see there. Um, is done by using a, a turquoise so either this I think it was this one or the light turquoise 
was highlighted by using deck 10 and then only in the later phases of the highlighting the white comes in but uh, this deck 10 does the job great uh, does a great job highlighting uh, the turquoise on its own and then finally not really a paint but a rather a wash this is the Vallejo game color wash the black shade wash uh, as you can see from the bottle I've been using this quite a long time um, if you're looking uh, for something like the Nuln oil uh, by Citadel, I think when, when, when it comes down to purely washing, so base coating, then putting a wash on there and your miniature is basically finished, then I think the, the Citadel shades, yeah, they do a fantastic job. Um, the difference with this wash is that the Vallejo washes, they're a lot heavier. Um, they don't really get into the crevices that well. I think purely as a, as a wash that I think Citadel, yeah, they're vastly superior to the Vallejo washes. Um, so I started to use this on uh, very specific um, occasions. For example, on the armor of my Mortar Works for my Lord of the Rings army. If you really want, uh, just put a, put down a layer of, for example, the the lead belcher. So you put a good base layer of a metallic paint and then put this on slightly diluted i usually take five drops of this and then one drop of uh, water uh, and just paint it on um, then yeah, yeah it, it, it leaves a lot of residue it doesn't get into the crevices that well as the null oil but that creates really this dirty dirty uh, armor look dark armor look that i really wanted to have uh, my mortar rocks um, that i really wanted to give to to my mortar rocks so for areas on bases also, if you just want to have this shaded uh, with a bit of texture still left, then I think the, the, the washes, the Vallejo wash, this is great. So that concludes this video of these seven paints, so my top seven favorite paints here on the desk. Please let me know in the comments what your favorite paint is, uh, or if any of these colors which are here now on the screen are also in your uh, favorite paints list. Um, please remember to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Remember the links of the paints that I showed you are in the video description. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.